as you can see this is a, a dark corner of the of the workshop that um, I, I just keep for storing uh, these box sides now I've got them all racked up um, I'll just pan down just to show you how much I, I do in one batch that will be the next batch of boxes these have been sitting here since uh, I normally put a date on them uh, I normally put a date on a few of these just so I know when I've cut them because time seems to run away from me but uh, it's probably April this year when I, I cut them last now these here are, are, are mango and there's some silky oak and some Tasmanian blackwood um, down the bottom there there's Queensland walnut um, bit of red cedar so yeah I, I generally I'll oh, see that's a bit of blackwood with a bit, bit of sapwood um, attached to that and on the bottom is, is all the lids now they've been sitting in the shelf for the last uh, probably three to six or well, April what we're in October now so six months now and they're ready to be made into boxes so I'll take these off the shelf and all the new ones that I cut I'll then replace them in here there's probably about a hundred boxes here which um, is my next batch that I'll be working on after we've cut the, the, the box sides one of the other things you have to do is is to cut the actual box lids um, I cut them to 170 mils long by 60 mils wide and 10 mils thick I, I put them in these racks to, to to dry out after I've done that and I've just put a piece of MDF uh, spacer so that air can circulate through them thickness doesn't really matter between you know 8 to 12 mils it all can be rough sawn because it all gets flattened and sanded out later in the process okay this is a um, a box side that I prepared earlier um, again we've, we've cut the the center bit along the bandsaw and, and we've, we've just dried it out now what we want to do now is to flatten these sides the, the the outside face of the box now traditionally you'd use a joiner to do that but this is highly figured uh, blackwood as you can see you know when it goes through the thickness uh, tends to want to chip and do all sorts of funny things so what I do is I just use a, a linisher that way we, we're sanding it flat it, there's a nice flat um, cast iron bed there and if we get it nice and flat here then we, we eliminate all the chipping out problems that we have by, uh, by not going to the joiner so it's fairly straightforward just flattening it out this is uh, 80 grit sandpaper and we've almost flattened it out there not applying too much pressure I've got a few low spots here. And we're almost done. Nice and flat. So that's one piece, and the other piece the linishes on on rollers. Because I've got a small workshop, so I just roll everything in and out. So a bit of a low spot there. So now these will be the outside face. If we line that back together, that'll be the outside face, and this will be the inside face of the, of the box. So once we've got that flat, I now pass the inside face of the box 
through a thickness drum sander and again by passing through a thickness of dr thickness of drum sander um, we don't run any risk of chipping out it's just I love working with highly figured timber and they're just notorious for chipping out okay this is my little jet drum sander um, again it's, it's, it's on a trolley so I just wheel it in and out of the workshop whenever I need it uh, when I do big runs I normally have a, uh, a trolley on this side and a trolley on that side with, with all the pieces and I just run it through um, and once I've got the, the right thickness then I'll stop up every time I go through I'll just um, take uh, about 0.4 to 0.5 mils off the, off the, the thickness of the, the machine every time and once all the high and low spots have been sanded down then that's when I stop so I'll just switch on the machine it just goes through like that there's 80 grit sandpaper in the machine so I'll just pass it through once take off 0.4 of a mil Go through again. And then I give another point four of a mil. Okay, we've come to the right thickness. As you can see, it's nice and flat. There are no high and low spots. So now all we need to do is sand the, out the outside face of the board, which will be the inside of the... So all we need to do, as you can see, we've, we've finished sanding the outside face of the board. So now all we need to do is sand the outside face of the, oh sorry, the inside face of the box down to 240 grit sandpaper and then we can put a rebate on there.